Hey, welcome back to another edition of Avid Golfer Magazine's Drive Time Feature. Every car manufacturer is rushing to get electric cars onto the market because the government's mandating that gas-powered engines might be fini sometime in the middle of this decade. And everybody's wondering, what is Mercedes going to do? Well, today we're going to talk about the EQS. This is their flagship model. This is the ultra-luxury electric car for those that have about six figures to spend on a truly magnificent vehicle. So I want to thank the guys over at Park Place uh, for the use of this vehicle. And let's give this thing a look on the outside, the whiz-bang and ultra-comfort interior. And we'll drive it around a little bit and show you some uh, nice features on that as well. electric car there is no grill there's no airflow that needs to go through to cool the engine but it does have it's a nice smooth fascia here and it's adorned by all the Mercedes uh, stars it's a good look if you get the AMG version it gives you a little more bold stance a little more air scoops and just just for looks what's interesting about this this is called a frunk so it's a front trunk the difference is this does not open um, all the cargo is in the back. Some other cars have a little bit of storage space in the front. This does not. As you can see here, how rounded and slopey everything is. It has beautiful headlights. It's got a nice light bar right here. I think Mercedes did a pretty good job. Again, any electric car is going to have this type of fascia in the front. No air grills needed on this one. All right, the initial reviews and feedback has been kind of polarizing with the, uh, with the styling. It's very slopey, um, and that's due to the Mercedes engineers wanted to make this the lowest drag coefficient, lowest wind resistance of any production car ever created is 0.20, and that is slipper. So what you get here is you get a cab forward design, kind of reminds me of the cars back in the 90s a little bit. What that also does is allow more um, interior room. They also moved out the stance of the tires, and so it gives you a nice planted ride. What's interesting here is you think, so what's this thing do? All this is, that's for your windshield wipers. That's all it is, because you can't open up the front. So Mercedes puts that right there. I think that's kind of interesting. You have the EQS logo right there. It almost looks like one of those on-off switches on a computer. Kind of interesting. But again, it's a, it's a very, I don't know how to not quite egg-shaped, but I think uh, depending on the color and everything, it grows on you. Some people absolutely love it. When I drove up here, uh, there was a policeman taking a break, and he goes, wow, that's a beautiful car. So truly, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and you'll make your own choice. These are 20-inch uh, wheels, 21-inch wheels over here. Uh, they have nice, uh, they are very um, aerodynamic as far as these wheels go. Everything is about putting as much range, as much mileage as you can get on one charge of the battery. The battery is 107.8 uh, kilowatts, and you can go up to uh, roughly 400 miles on a charge, which is pretty darn good if you're worried about, uh, uh, you know, range caution, range envy, range worry, whatever. This will get you some places that you don't have to worry about finding a charging station, but I'll show you how to do that a little bit as well. Okay, what I like about the new design here, and I'm seeing in a lot of models, is you have flush door handles, and then when you come and open it up, they pop out. If this is in the dark, these all light up. They all give you a splash um, Mercedes-Benz logo on the ground. Almost everybody's doing that, but I think it's a nice touch. It's a nice party trick. And then when you're done, lock it. Door, uh, the side view mirrors fold in. And again, it's, a, it's just a nice streamlined look. If you get a package that um, more of an, that's an option, when you walk up, you can actually, the doors will open automatically. And then when you get inside, when it, it knows that you're inside the car, it will close automatically. The only thing you want to be careful about, don't do it in tight spaces if you're in parking. I think the rear looks more like a, a, a normal Mercedes. It has kind of a stately look to it. Yeah, it's rounded, but again, it's that drag coefficient that the Mercedes uh, engineers were longing for. It's got a nice little spoiler lip right here, breaks it up just a little bit. And I like the light bar here. Got kind of cool LEDs here, and uh, obviously no 
exhaust anywhere down here don't need it but I think it's a good clean look when you open up the trunk you just push this little button right here comes up and it's a hatchback this is what I love it gives you a lot of room a lot of open space to get stuff into and um, it's 22 cubic feet with the seats up, about 63 down. So it has a lot of space for you. Obviously, you can get your clubs in here and everything. Uh, those fold down almost uh, flat. And, uh, and there you go. What I like about this as well is when you close this, you have no idea it's a hatchback. Love that feature. All right, so how do you charge this thing up? You gotta do it at some point, right? Well, here's your charging port right here. It has the normal uh, connector right here, and then it has a high end, like a 200 kilowatt. Um, feature right here you can move that Mercedes says you can go from 10% to 80% if you're on a high-end DC charger in about 30 minutes one of my big qualms about having an electric car is how long does it take to charge my car does it take three hours does it take 10 hours 20 whatever it is or is it long enough I can just go get a cup of coffee and a sandwich and I can be ready to go on the road again from 10% to 80% in a half an hour is pretty darn quick Okay, when I think Mercedes and I think S-Class, I think of opulence, I think about leg room, back seat room, you can kick back, you can relax. Well, this has it. Really cool, they have these pillows for headrest. Oh my gosh, they're so comfortable. Oh, love it. Obviously the seats, the leather, it's quilted, it's comfortable, it's supportive. I have leg room for days. I'm about 5'10". Look at how much room I have. I mean, I can almost lay out completely. I um, also like the materials, different materials. This is a kind of a matte wood finish. This is like piano uh, black uh, gloss. And this is leather. And it, it just all fits. It all works. You have a double panoramic roof up here. And pretty good headroom, I would say. I mean, if you lay down here a little bit, it's even more. Uh, for having a double panoramic roof, it usually lowers the roof line. The roof line is already sloped as it is for the for the drag coefficient. Um, uh, still pretty pretty generous, I think. Uh, there's here's what I find interesting. So you got an armrest right here, right? Not sure what this is. Haven't been able to figure it out. I don't know if it's a pencil holder. I, I'm not quite sure what, but uh, that's <laughs> it's interesting to say the least. Put that up. But again, the whole idea of this is you can just relax and you can talk to the uh, to the Mercedes interface and you can heat up the rear seats. Uh, it, it just works impeccably. It, one of the things about this car is it's all about opulence and cruising and just chill. Um, not so much in high performance, that's not how this car was made or why it was made. This is all about driving from point A to point B in utter serenity. All right, talked about the exterior. We'll get into the, the driving here in a bit, but this is where the car shines. This is where this vehicle just envelops you in luxury and sumptuousness and just utter serenity. It is incredible. Mercedes has gone far beyond what most people would hope for. And let's get to this. There's so much stuff to talk about. I'm gonna have to be a little bit, um, I'm going to have to edit some of this because otherwise I'd be here all day showing you what this does. But I'll show you the highlights and then when you get a chance, you can take it for as long a spin. You can take it through all the different uh, whiz bang features and we'll go from there. I don't know if you can hear this. It's kind of like a, a serenity background noise. It's like white noise. It's kind of like feng shui. I don't know how to describe it. but Okay, so first of all, the seats are so incredible. If I use... Uh, Hey Mercedes, I can turn on, watch this. How can I help? Turn on massaging seats. I'm switching on the massage for you. Thank you. So now I can feel this. I've got a deep workout massage working. I can also say, hey Mercedes, heat up my seats. I'm switching on the seat heating. <laughs> Lovely, right? It's like I have my own personal butler. The steering wheel feels great it's obviously you can move it up and down they even have a um, a feature here where it can sense how much you weigh and how tall you are and it will move your seats according to what they think the specs are it moved me a little too close for my um, personal preference but I think again it's kind of a cool little feature 
you see the illumination from the uh, double panoramic roof. If I want to close this, I just do this. Pretty cool. I can stop it. Everything here is haptic. There's no really movable buttons. Even if I want to move these seats, I just have to touch this and I move up or move back. You have your you can have your seats heated, cooled, massaged. Another cool feature because sometimes you might be running out of uh, juice, right? Literally electric juice. Where to? This will show me. Uh, charging stations. Shows me all the charging stations within a certain area. I think that's really cool. Because you kind of need it. Sometimes you're going to be in an area you don't, you're not familiar with, right? Uh, this is programmable here. If I use this, I can go ahead and let's see here. I can move this around. I can put it wherever I want. Um, you got about three or four. With Fox News four, is at three or four different Breaking screens. News twenty. Crazy. Um, so that's how that works. And then I can go here. I can go to Sport. I can go understated. Let's see what understated looks like. A little bit different. If I want to go to, uh, I can change the colors on it. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, a lot of programmable features. This does not have the hyper screen, which starts here, and it's one continuous um, sheet of glass. It, it's incredible. Uh, wasn't available on this car. It's about a $7,500 option. But truth be told, also has a screen here for the passengers. They can watch stuff. And how about this? If I'm driving and my passenger is watching something, a, a video or whatever, it can sense if I, the driver, am looking at that screen too long, well, that's dangerous. If you're not keeping your eyes on the road, it will fade that out from my point of view. Pretty wild, isn't it? Also, this has this deal where you can go ahead and... Um, if somebody touches the car, if there's a collision in, with the car, it automatically takes pictures of what happened. How about that? So now you got a like big brother to watch over you. I know it happens in car dealers sometimes where they're, they're somebody's leaning up against the car, all of a sudden the car starts shooting pictures. It's actually kind of funny. Um, the camera is excellent. Now one thing about this car is um, it's long, and I can't see the front end from my driver. Um, preference over here okay but this has a really good view you can change it if you want um, it's it's pretty wild uh, I can change it to this or I can change it to that um, change it to that it's pretty darn cool and you obviously have your climate control here if I want to do that everything is touch now some people um, might miss the actual knobs whether it's for uh, raising or lowering the volume or climates or whatever everything is done haptically and um, so that takes a little bit getting used to uh, even the volume control here to free people I can turn it down but I have to do it by a slider here and I can also do it by by the steering wheel as well um, again takes a little bit get, getting used to but the seats all oh, this massage is incredible and and it heats up right away and it will cool right away. Uh, it will have a head-up display when the chips are available once again. Uh, this slides open. You have a charging station right here. Put that right there for your wireless. And, um, and then a pretty good storage area back here. Um, I would say of all the things it does, um, it will also tell you uh, the charging, like if I want to go to, I can see how much uh, juice I have left. That's 64 percent, about 260 miles. I can change um, a bunch of other features. You can make the max or whatever you want. So it's the last 20 percent when you uh, charge a battery. That's what takes the most time. So you get up to 80 percent. That's where you get that 10 percent to 80 percent in about a half an hour for using a 200 kilowatt. A charger that's what they that's what you need that for but other than that the sound system is amazing I love these turbine vents here again you have the wood flashing right here the trim and you have the contrasting uh, 
uh, glossy piano black. You have a storage unit under here as well with a little strap. You can add some more stuff here. It has 64 um, colors of ambient light. So if I want to do this, you can change this down to whatever you want. You can make it multicolor. You can <laughs> Venice pink. You can go burning blue. It's got everything you'd ever want. Again, this car will tech you for as much as your heart desires and how much you'll be able to handle. Um, some people won't use everything, I promise you. But it's there if you want it. And um, again, these pillow uh, headrests are just, <laughs> they're just to die for. Visibility, really good um, for a car of this low sloping nature. Um, other than that, okay, so here's the other thing. Uh, you can change the, all electric cars have regenerative uh, braking. So when you turn on the brakes or you don't have your foot on the brake and you start slowing down, it will slow it down for you. So if I use these paddle shifters right here, let's see how we do, oh, gotta put it in drive first. So now I have normal recuperation here. I wanna do it again, intelligent, none. If I wanna go left, it's strong. So when I drive, and I'll do this when I'm driving, it'll slow it down. You might not even have to use the brake half the time because um, it's that it's that responsive. It really depends on your driving and how you want to do it. You also have, I'll, when I do this uh, later, you have different driving modes. You have eco, you have comfort, you have sport, changes the settings on everything, tightens up the steering wheel a little bit and the suspension. The suspension is amazing. I'm going over railroad tracks and I'm not feeling a thing. Um, it's just like driving a pillow, a little more responsive than a pillow. But again, if you're in a if you're in a luxury, this car has it all. All right, let's take this opulent vehicle for a little test drive. And one of the things when you first get in, you can get two sound experiences. It's that silver wave or vivid flux, whatever floats your boat. Again, kind of like being in a, in a massage room, kind of, right? Where they put that ambient noise in there, just gives you that nice chill experience. One of the things about this car that I love, it's a long car, um, is the rear tires, the rear axle, uh, will move 10%. So I can make this thing, this really long car, change and turn very quickly. I'm gonna about one, one to two uh, parking spaces, which is amazing for a car this long with this extended wheelbase. As I start driving, I'm gonna put this in sport mode, and you hear little, little noises. Kinda hear the engine whine a little bit, the turbine. Got a little space age sound to it. I have this thing in, in strong regeneration, so the the brakes kind of work on their own. So if I'm coming up to, if I take my foot off the gas, <clears throat> it will go ahead and start slowing down on its own. Might not be for everybody. The beauty of it is you have options, and I'm going to turn this back into normal recuperation. So if I lift my foot off the gas, it's, an, it's a little bit of a smoother stop. Or you can go completely and it works out really nice uh, soaks up bumps like crazy you can the air suspension is sublime this is a total chill vehicle this isn't something I guess it still gets 0 to 60 in, in 5.9 but this is mostly for just getting from point A to point B with a smile on your face and no high blood pressure no nothing very planted. Yeah, it just feels feels great. But the interior, it just all the materials look wonderful. Again, as I mentioned earlier, all this is haptic. All this is touch screen, touch controls. Uh, so it takes a little while getting used to. But this pillow in the back, oh, in the back of your head, amazing. It's just it surrounds you in, in loveliness. It's really something. The range, 
about 400 miles, probably a little bit less when it's cold, because cold definitely adversely affects battery life. Um, and you go from 10% to 80% charge if you're on a, on a 200 kilowatt charger in about 30 minutes, which is pretty darn good. That's one that's the thing I always worried about when um, you wonder how much range you have left. And when you hit the, uh, the tablet here, it will show you where the closest charging stations are, which is great because you never know where you're going to be. And uh, I like that a lot. Turning is good. Not too much lean. But if I punch it, you hear that? <laughs> Sounds like something at a Tron. It's not old school. Doesn't sound like a V8 or V12, that's for sure. But it's something we're probably going to all have to get used to. Maybe at some point, uh, car manufacturers will be able to uh, mimic the, uh, the old combustible engines if that floats your boat. Uh, me as being an old school guy, I kind of like it hearing that exhaust note but for what it is and the range that it is this is truly a remarkable vehicle it's gonna set you back six figures this starts at 102 this is tested about 110 go up to 130 you start adding options to it, it gets up there pretty quick but that's any high-end import um, but I think Mercedes did a one heck of a job again their design out, out the exterior might not be for everyone, but I think it grows on you after a while. It, it's understated class, that's what I'll call it. And um, and like I said, when I walked up, when I drove up in the parking lot, there was a there was a policeman there, and he goes, "Wow, that's a beautiful car." So it's it's all subjective, and it'll either hit you or it won't. But I think over time, it's all about the the experience driving the car and being inside this amazing cocoon that will uh, sway you to get this because uh, that's what it's all about it's clean it's electric it's got a good range again I want to thank the people over at Park Place Motor Cars the vehicle you can also check out Mercedes-Benz of Plano as well and uh, I think uh, if you're looking for a car at this price point and uh, with all the features and all the class and, and just flagship uh, accoutrements, this is a car you definitely need to look at. So there you go. It's the Mercedes-Benz 2022 EQS 450 Plus. It's all electric, it's all luxury, it's all sumptuousness, and it is a blast to drive if you're into cruising and opulence. And so, I want to thank folks again over at Park Place Motor Cars for the use of this vehicle. It starts at about 102,000. This one, the 450 Plus, taps in at about 110,000. You can go up even higher with the 580. But if you're looking for the most luxurious electric car on the market, this will be it. So put it on your um, short list to test drive.